and welcome back. Good morning. Welcome back to Open Your Eyes. And uh, we're about to venture off into our second segment for this morning. We've got a very interesting individual in with us. As a matter of fact, the conversation will be around Belize and Jamaica and their diplomatic relations. Um, in to tell us about it, we actually have the High Commissioner of Jamaica to Belize, and it's none other than Mr. Jason Hall. Very interesting guy. Mr. Hall, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank welcome. you for having me. Thank welcome. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd, I'd probably uh, threw in another language for you, which would be Garifuna, uh, which uh, means good morning. And how would you respond? Uh, uh, you're telling me back. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> I was just hoping you'd say morning <laughs> in good Creole. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> yadi, yadi. You know, one of the things, uh, you know, it's very interesting, especially uh, having uh, folks like you around. Uh, but we jump on into our relations, Belize and Jamaica. Uh, we, we, we think about it. Uh, for Belize, for Belize we, we find ourselves in... in and basically the same as Jamaica in terms of our lifestyle, how we live, uh, nearly how we talk. You go to the U.S. as a Belizean and you say something to somebody, they say, you're from Jamaica. Okay. No, we're from Belize. So let's talk about our relations. Where, uh, where, where was the relationship between Belize and Jamaica? Where is it now? And where do we want to well, go? First of all, I should say that landing here, I, I immediately felt at home. Coming mm. from Mexico City, um, as I came out of the plane, I knew... I was in a Jamaica-like setting, yeah. obviously, okay. in the richness of Belize. No, there, there's just something distinct between Jamaica and Belize that is, that is close, that is proximate, that transcends you know, most other relationships yeah. around. Um, and interestingly, Jamaica and Belize relationships go way back to the, to the Battle of St. George, mm -hmm. yes, where I, I gather you had a problem with some Spanish and some troops came from Jamaica to help you with that. Um, of course, Jamaica has this track record of helping out in revolution all across the region. We were assisted in the liberation of, the Haiti, of Haiti in that independence. So our relationship with Belize goes way back. And in the, in the ensuing years, you had Jamaican um, civil service and public service workers, policemen, um, firemen coming here to Belize. Mm -hmm. And that has continued. And now, being here, I see that there are some very successful Jamaican businesses here that have integrated and are very much yeah. Belizean businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about rainforest seafoods or chukka mm -hmm. tours. Um, and it continues to grow. Um, and as you said, when a Belizean speaks, they think they're from Jamaica. <laughs> so, you know, it's very heartening. Now, at the multilateral level, Belize yeah. is extremely is an extremely important ally. Being here in Central America, pretty much the last bastion of CARICOM, mm -hmm. um, with an interesting role as a bridge into SICA, into Mesoamerica, Belize is very important in that regard. And Jamaica has, of course, stood firmly behind Belize mm -hmm. in matters of sovereignty, national security. Yeah. Um, and of course, you, you recently concluded um, referendum. Congratulations mm -hmm. to the government for that because that is something that is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we in Jamaica back Belize 100 percent in that regard. You had such a perfect precursor to this conversation <laughs> with uh, or sugar yes. um, conversation Absolutely. there because it, it really highlights why relationships when we think of diplomatic relationships we think of far off countries and mm -hmm. you know wealthy countries. Mm -hmm. um, kind of providing uh, for Belize. Mm -hmm. But beyond just being able to share ties within the Caribbean, there's a unity that needs to exist between Caribbean nations. And Belize and Jamaica, I think, is definitely one of the stronger ones. I would say so. Yeah. Um, talk to me about, about establishing the relations between these two nations um, and where you see your greatest strength in having this, this uh, diplomatic connection. Well, the strength lies, obviously, in the commitment, the support that we have. Yeah. Um, greater strength lies in the greater numbers that we have. Yeah. As far as the challenges that lay ahead, um, it's going to be a continuous process of multilateral engagement with all the other stakeholders in we're, um, concerned. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we both have fairly good relations with all of our neighbors yeah. and, uh, and all the member states within the OAS. 
Um, there, this is a challenging time mm -hmm. for the region. The geopolitics of the region has changed significantly. Um, and so there is a need for us to be ever more closer and ever more united and resolved in our own objectives, our collective objectives. Mm -hmm. Things like um, national sovereignty, national security, um, energy security is a big issue now. Um, next week, there's actually a very interesting conference in Cancun, Mexico, which centers on the Sargasso, Sargasso. problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there is something that is of a regional scale that is go impacting perhaps the most important industry in the region, which is tourism, but also your maritime flora and fauna. People overlook the fact that Sargasso is actually killing flora in coastlines. It blocks out all of the photosynthetic mm -hmm. um, processes um, in, in rotting. It creates an adverse um, deoxygenated condition in the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a very serious problem. Yeah. So a regional response is required. Yeah. And Jamaica will be there, Belize will be there, obviously Mexico and a number of the other ca countries in the Caribbean. Yeah. So let's 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 talk about uh, the relationship that currently exists and and now where you see opportunities for further strengthening. So I believe being here for the first time that this is a tremendous country with tremendous resources. Mm -hmm. um, the sheer natural beauty of it. I went to Jaguar Paw and I was just blown away. Cool. You know, these are you, you cannot create these attractions. Mm -hmm. So tourism obviously is a major growth potential area. Yeah. Um, Jamaica is a fairly well-established tourism destination with um, uh, quite a significant infrastructure around tourism. And we are prepared to share that experience with Belize, both in terms of links with potential investors, strategies for courting mm -hmm. investors, development of um, cap capacity building mechanisms on land so that you can better take advantage of the tourism. I'm talking about well, I shouldn't say it like that. That's so you could better take advantage of the tourism opportunities. You don't uh -huh. want to take advantage of tourists. <laughs> but essentially, you would be building the capacity along the lines of hotel workers, chefs, um, mm -hmm. staff, um, waiters, etc., mm -hmm. through a mechanism like the Heart Trust NTA, which trains people. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, as I mentioned earlier, the whole business of courting investors is a very strategic business. You mm -hmm. have to know what you want to go after. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the, you can't just have the hotel room, you need the plane of course. to bring them in. So negotiating air services agreements and so forth. Yeah. And maybe creating some sort of joint destination approach because at the end of the day, we really are pretty close to each other yeah. Yeah. geographically. Yeah. Yeah. It's feasible. Yeah. Air services, now that's been something tried and just for some reason mm -hmm. unable to, to hang on. Well, Do you yeah. think it's a different context now? A lot of things have happened over the years. So previously you had national carriers and countries were very protective about fifth freedoms. Mm -hmm. Jamaica no longer has a national carrier, so I think the conversation is slightly different. Okay. Um, but air travel is a very complex business. It's yeah. a cutthroat business for airlines. So it's very, um, it's very much determined on volumes of per people. And so it's a function of how you line up in, in a joint destination scenario. So if you are able to create that sort of demand for the long haul passengers that are coming with two weeks to spare. Mm -hmm. I think you have a proposition and it's just like everything, it's getting the right people together yeah. with the right value proposition mm -hmm. and everybody comes out on top. I call that win incentives. <laughs> <laughs> win incentives. Yeah. Everybody win. Everybody you know, win. one of the things, and I want to step back a little, um, I could remember growing up and you hear about uh, diplomatic ties with other countries, and you'd wonder to you'd wonder to yourself, why would countries want to 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 actually have conversations? And this is totally being ignorant. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who would feel the same way, especially growing up in high school. They're listening. What's the importance uh, of diplomatic ties uh, with countries? Why do we share diplomatic ties? That's a very good question. So it dates back to the v v um, Vienna Convention on Consular Affairs, which is, and essentially. Um, along that convention, you make an agreement to have representation in a host country mm -hmm. and they have representation in yours. And what that facilitates primarily is a, is a trifecta of, of objectives. The first 
is looking after your nationals mm -hmm. in that country. It's a consular post. So any any issues arising with your um, citizens in that country, you have an office there that can cater to yeah. them. The second, obviously, is at the level, as we spoke earlier, of multilateral and bilateral relations. Mm -hmm. um, the world is constantly faced with choices and decisions and votes. And so having a presence there on the ground, not only are you able to participate in those activities, but also you are able to relay information back to headquarters to better inform your own foreign policy. Mm -hmm. um, the third centers on the, the nitty gritty of all of that, which is the promotion of trade and investment. Mm -hmm. You need a presence in a country if you're looking to develop an export market for your products yeah. or looking for investors to come into your country. Yeah. Um, and then finally, at the end of the day, um, Jamaica in particular, we, we, we really don't have uh, much that we can export to Mexico, for example, but our currency is culture. Mm -hmm. So having that embassy, that location from which to disseminate all of this cultural content in a strategic fashion is, yeah. is very key. Yeah. yeah. And looking at, you know, you, you, you speak of culture, and I'm just thinking to myself, you, a very missing element in this conversation is looking at uh, cultural exchange as well. And I'm sure how that perhaps must be a wonderful experience <laughs> in, in Mexico. Um, but bringing it home to Belize, there's so many um, similarities in terms of or how we display our Caribbean culture in Belize, um, so similarly linked to Jamaica. What do you see as perhaps some of the opportunities there in having a cultural exchange or music is, is for example, right. one of the highlights? Precisely, yeah. and that's, that's one of the key areas of, of my tour yeah. in that, fortunately, through previous um, experiences and jobs, I, I've quite a network with Jamaican artists. Yeah. And before coming to Mexico, um, at a send off for me, a number of them, um, I won't name them because then you're gonna <laughs> be hyped up. But I will, <laughs> I will mention that I was, um, I was with Sean Paul in Guatemala two mm -hmm. weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he shared with me some, a, a, a desire to do something big in Central America. Mm -hmm. And as we plotted out this tour, um, I noticed there was a Z missing. Mm. So I, I quickly <laughs> checked in and they said, you know, but no, we can do that through Chetumal. I said, no, 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 you have to, you have to come to Belize. Yeah. And so these, these types of activities yeah. will be something that we'll be focusing on and seeing more of because at the end of the day, you know, one love is, is more than just the song of the millennium. It's, yeah. it's, it's a way of living, yeah. and that's what we really want to carry forward. Mm -hmm. CSME, Caribbean and Single Market Economy, and um, especially with the ties that we are sharing with Jamaica, and of course I'm sure we enjoy it, especially in the to that tourism aspect, and hearing that leaving Mexico City and touching down in Belize, you feel a sense of home, mm -hmm. which Absolutely. brought me to the CSME, uh, the benefic the, the, how beneficial is it between both countries, uh, Belizeans going across? So we're seeing this a lot, uh, Jamaicans coming here, uh, making business happen, uh, giving Belizeans jobs, so who, who are, where Caribbean people are like. Are we seeing this uh, with both countries? And how important is it? It's very important. Um, CSME as a construct has its own set of challenges. Specifically between Jamaica and Belize, one of the greatest challenges has been the fact that there is very limited air service between mm -hmm. the two. We used mm -hmm. to have a direct flight mm -hmm. with Air Jamaica, um, but there's no more Air Jamaica. So to facilitate that movement of persons, we will have to address that factor yeah. of a flight. Additionally, there are opportunities for trade for certain Belizean produce to be transshipped over Jamaica to be spread throughout the region. Mm -hmm. So the potential is very high um, with the booming tourism industry that, that, that you know, could be here. Yeah. There is opportunity for workers to flow from there. I'm actually working on a direct flight from Mexico to Jamaica. And what I found in those discussions is that you really need to step back and look at how you can hub and spoke. Mm -hmm. And so, in this equation of finding a direct flight, 
It may be that Belize is not the hub where they come to, but maybe they fly to Cancun and from Cancun to Mobe. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's a work in progress. Yeah. Um, it's a very complex discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I have a background in tourism, I found that you know these things take time. But I'm optimistic that because of what we have, um, and of course stepping back and looking at the tourism of of this Western Caribbean, you have three stalwarts that account for 80% of the tourism to the entire region, mm -hmm. those being Mexico, um, Jamaica, Cuba. You can, of course, include Damarep, um, mm -hmm. which is also significant. Mm -hmm. But those four destinations, um, so there's an opportunity there to maybe have uh, a direct service between those, yeah. and that in turn would facilitate greater connectivity. and then. You know, we, as I said earlier, Jamaicans have been coming to Belize for, for years and yeah. Belizeans going to Jamaica. Yeah. Um, I've met countless people who have studied in Jamaica yeah. here. Yeah. Um, there those, and and that, I was going to ask about that. What, what is the um, current population of Jamaicans living in Belize? It's difficult to say, yeah. but I am thinking, based on the discussions we've had, uh, in the vicinity of 2,000, mm -hmm. wow. maybe 2,500. Mm -hmm. Um, because you have Jamaicans coming in at all levels, you have different yeah. generations of Jamaicans. Yeah. yeah. But I put the call out there, let us all as Jamaicans <laughs> register <laughs> and, you know, this is something we would like yeah. to do. You talk about the, the Jamaican diaspora, it's yeah. a very significant one. Yeah. And to all Jamaicans here, although the High Commission is based in Mexico City, we have an honor consul here. and. The Jamaican High Commission is open 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 yeah. days a year. Sometimes 66. Sometimes 66 <laughs> for you, Jamaicans. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely you want to get that, that register compact. I mean, we have quite a few imports <laughs> as spouses, we know that much. Yes. And, uh, you know, we have Belizeans who have also moved to Jamaica as well. Yeah, I think our most famous export is perhaps Kalila Enriquez, who yes. is uh, yes. a journalist uh, working in, yes, in Jamaica as well. Um, but bringing it all home, I, I think when we think of, of the, the diplomatic relations within the Caribbean, um, and I think of, of countries that perhaps we, we relate to the most. Jamaica is definitely one of them. What would you say to Belizeans about being able to recognize? A lot of people haven't been to the Caribbean. Um, yeah. If they haven't studied there, they don't necessarily get the opportunity to go. About how this strong connection that we have with Jamaica is a great benefit to us. Absolutely. I mean, Jamaica is open to the world. But given the history we have with Belize, we're especially welcoming of you all, yeah. to, to what we share in common. In fact, many Belizeans are indirectly Jamaican, <laughs> whether by association or genetically. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, this is your home too. Mm -hmm. And we have a tremendous array of opportunities vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis education, vis-a-vis -vis employment opportunities. Yeah. Jamaica is a place where you can really learn something that you can use and take into future life yeah. so you know our doors are open just as your doors have been open to us mm -hmm. and we look forward to that continued exchange um, you know we're a small country we seldom look at anybody as a as a little brother Belize is definitely our sibling I mean yeah. big big brother is Mexico <laughs> but you know we're, we're, we're basically at the same yeah. level and um, that similarity in food mm. in music dance and you know I, I told the Prime Minister yesterday I said the genetic pool is here for the sprinter so I wouldn't be surprised if there's a Usain Bolt looking <laughs> lurking somewhere in Belize in, in, yeah. in, 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 that'd in, be a good I that believe, would be no, a good I, relation I believe that, I believe training that. some of our and athletes so, you know and that's that's something that yeah. we have done in the past yeah. that we, that's an open door uh, most Caribbean athletes who yeah. want to take their sprinting career further come to Jamaica. You know, and I think and I think that's one of the I think that's one of the ways to go. Um, there are countries who are not able to do as much when it comes to sports. Whenever we uh, Belizeans go on out there for sports, they would say or we would say we've got the natural talent because we don't necessarily have the facilities to. Mm -hmm. 
in terms of diplomatic conversations that you've had with our country, is there anything in the pipeline whereby they would do probably an adapt an individual, whereby you see the potential in that person, and then we bring them across to Jamaica Absolutely. and give them the facilities for them to eventually prosper. Is there any let me, let me manage your expectations like a little bit mm -hmm. in terms of facilities. <laughs> uh -huh. We're not that much better <laughs> off. What we have is the is technical know-how yes. and the, the culture of it. So, you know, sprinting. I used to be a sprinter. Cool. And, you know, you have 10 seconds to justify your existence. So you, have to, <laughs> you have to really That's know true. what you're yeah. doing. Yes. Um, and so that, 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 those facilities are there. The coaches, the technical staff, yeah. the, the environment of being... In, in, a, in, in a place where you're constantly preparing for sprints. So that's there. Um, we have had um, discussions about a sports agreement. There are a couple of agreements that, that are longstanding, mm -hmm. which could perhaps you know, be taken out and reviewed, mm -hmm. yeah. updated, and most importantly, enacted. Um, but again, there's some critical fact, um, ingredients required here, that airlift, that direct connection. Yeah. Currently, you can go via Panama, but I gather you have to overnight yeah. in Panama one night going, mm -hmm. which yeah. is not always convenient. But it all is not lost. You can also go, um, obviously, right. through the US. Yeah. Um, but So it's a question of really knowing what your needs are yeah. Yeah. first, um, knowing what we can provide putting those two together mm -hmm. and, and making it happen, facilitating it. So we're all about that at the embassy. Yeah. But I really do believe, I mean, I driving to um, Belmopan and beyond, um, you know, just looking at the people around Belize City, I, I definitely, you know, the thing, uh, sprinting, you can look at somebody and know they're a sprinter mm -hmm. based on the shape of their head. Really? <laughs> yeah. That sounds like this a guy. whole other conversation <laughs> for another show. But we uh, do appreciate you coming in <laughs> to have this conversation with us today. We know uh, you were only here for a short time and we wanted to take advantage of that yes. to start to build our relationship here as well. I really appreciate it. All right, so and next fact, time you're here, uh -huh. you can stop in. I, I brought you all Ooh. a small token from the Blue Mountains of Jamaica. Oh, Indiana. my favorite. <laughs> Some Blue there Mountain coffee. There you go. What? From Javdom. Hey. Hey. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate this. it. And somebody gave you, know, you the proper insight into, thanks, John, you don't drink it. coffee, right? <laughs> <laughs> My wife is a lover of coffee, but what, what stunned me the most is that uh, it happened uh, like in the cartoon. You're watching a cartoon and somebody pulls out a car yeah. and just tell you, hey, you know, I've, I've got to go. We didn't even see that coming. Well, you know. <laughs> Thank but you My wife so loves much. coffee. Thank you so very yes. much. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you All for right. having me. We're going to go ahead now and take a break. When we come back, we'll be joined Ooh. by representatives of the Public Service Union about their upcoming AGM. So stay tuned.